Hello everyone, this is Devin Thorpe with Forbes for, I'm the uh, social entrepreneur at Forbes. Uh, I'm grateful to have to, with us today Sherry Arison, who is a billionaire philanthropist. She's joining us from Tel Aviv today. Sherry, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Devin. It's really a thrill to have you. I, I am excited, not because uh, you're such a well-known, well-regarded person. Forbes calls you one of the most 100 powerful women in the world. Uh, notes that you're uh, one of the very richest people in the world. We're excited to have you with us for those reasons. But, but I think you have an exceptional passion for doing good in the world. In fact, you've recently written a book about inspiring people to do good. Tell us about your book. Yes, uh, thank you. My book is called Activate Your Goodness, Transforming the World Through Doing Good. And basically it's a practical guide for doing good with oneself, one's family, surroundings, community, environment, the planet, all circles of life. That's, that's wonderful. What inspired you to write that book? Well, you know, I'm always trying to find ways to make a positive change, a positive difference in the world. I do this through my businesses. I do it through philanthropy. And the book was just another vehicle to get that message across. I think that's uh, wonderful. Is this the first book you've written? No, I, ri I wrote a book a few years ago, uh, a few years ago called Birth, um, When the Spiritual and the Material Come Together. So this is my second book, Activated. Great, right, right. The... Uh, I think you'll find that it doesn't pay as well as uh, some <laughs> other uh, avenues that you probably have open to you. But it's a it's a great way to leave a mark, isn't it? Uh, yes, well, it's it's. It, I'm so passionate about really making a positive difference in the world, and and so the book is really just another vehicle to get people engaged to do good things. You have done some remarkable things. One of the most interesting things that you've done recently is that you endowed a professorship at uh, George Mason University. The, the professorship was in doing good values. Is that right? That's correct. Um, after many years of creating visions, um, visions like financial freedom for the bank uh, that I'm a controlling shareholder, or my, uh, my company, infrastructure and real estate company, sustainability, uh, an organization for inner peace. I mean, many different visions and many different values. Um, after a very long process, I decided, decided to create a model that really helps uh, individuals, uh, students, uh, businesses, organization to implement these values, to re take responsibility and create change for themselves and for their surroundings. Um, so yes, there is an endowed professorship. We're doing a lot of research. There's been universities that have researched uh, these values, Harvard, uh, Babson College, Thunderbird University, and now I believe that this endowed professorship will give it a step further to bring case studies from around the world and examples how we can implement these values in our everyday lives and in our businesses. What are some of the specific values that you think the world needs more of? Well, I think the world needs more of an intention, first of all, to look at values, to live our values, to have a moral compass in everything that we do. And I believe that it's possible to do this in any field that you're in. I do this through all of my businesses. Like I said, in the bank, we lead with financial freedom, which is really giving people the education and the tools to make the right choices, to understand their finances, and to be able to make choices that they can then grow and prosper. Um, within the infrastructure and real estate company, the idea to put sustainable practices from you know planning, from from having uh, uh, the the ground uh, purified, from having architects that are green, building with uh, sustainable sustainable materials. I mean, really the full spectrum. Caring about the environment, about animals, about water, energy. Um, I started a um, a water company called Mia, which is bringing millions of people water that didn't have water before just by being more efficient with our water, water systems. So I truly believe that if we put our mind to it, we can make a huge difference. 
Well, uh, clearly you're, you're seeing that. Now, in some of the things that you're doing where you're having that positive impact, I imagine that you're also finding ways to make money. Is that the case? Are you seeing those opportunities? Definitely. First of all, you know, the examples that I just gave are examples in business. Of course, I have a lot of philanthropy and do a lot of philanthropy. But in business, businesses need to make a profit. That's what they're there for. But I believe that you can care about people, you can care about the planet, and you can still make a profit. And that's what I suggest other businesses to do. And it'll make a big difference in our world. The, uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of your philanthropy. What are some of the other things that you've been doing? Um, well, our main uh, philanthropy is here in Israel. We give to all spectrum um, of, of the quality of life, whether it's in education, health, research, um, children, youth, um, uh, people in distress. I mean, really the whole spectrum. Um, but we do have several organizations other under the Ted Arison Family Foundation, like an organization called Essence of Life, which gives people uh, the tools and awareness for inner peace, uh, understanding that if we each reach our own individual peace, we'll reach world peace. Um, there's organizations like Ruach Tova, which is Good Spirit in Hebrew, which connects people who want to volunteer with organizations that need volunteering. And basically, we've taken this one step further by creating Good Deeds Day, which has gone totally international. We're now in 50 different countries. And the idea is that everyone can do a good deed, uh, big or small, a smile that passes on that kind of energy is a good deed, going and helping the elderly or uh, helping the homeless or um, you know, working with children or planting a garden, each one in their own way. And really, I invite everyone to take part. We, uh, we've been doing this now for seven years. Uh, the eighth year is March 9th, 2014. And we engage everyone to go out and do a good deed. Fantastic. How do you, how do you inspire your employees to get them engaged and to adopt some of the values that you find to be so important? Well, I found that really, you know, especially when it's talking about values, um, you can't tell people how to feel or how to act about upon their values. All you can do is really um, give awareness, educate, and engage people. And then they'll take it to the way that they feel is right. And I think that when you have an open discussion, you create creativity, uh, engage people in discussion, and then I find that people really come on board. What we've done in our businesses and philanthropy is we created forums, cross-cultural forums, where we have people from each one of our companies, and like I said, I'm in finance, real estate, infrastructure, renewable energy, uh, water, and salt, so there's many different uh, businesses. And in the philanthropic side, we have several philanthropic organizations. We have representatives from each one of the entities sitting together and talking about how we can implement these values across the board and it's made quite a difference. The, it takes work. It doesn't just automatically happen, right? It's a lot of work. You need a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance, and I think a lot of faith uh, and belief in what you're doing. But I, I believe that if you have good intentions and you really feel that you want to make a difference, uh, you take the long, you know, look at a long view, long-term view, uh, things happen. Well, as you talk about taking a long-term view, one of the most important things is to help younger people to adopt these values that you find so important. Can you tell us, how do you in inculcate these values in young people? Well, first of all, I think young people are more aware of it than, than older people. I think that, you know the world is changing, and, and younger people really want to see a different world. I think you know younger people understand that although we're all individuals, we do have a collective. We are one in humanity. We are one planet. And I believe that the younger generation gets that. So, you know, once you steer them in the right direction, they, they know how to come on board. What, uh, what is the B team? Um, the B team was started by Sir Richard Branson and Johan Seid, two business uh, people. Um, and basically, they decided that business um, needs to be in the forefront of leadership for creating positive change, thinking about uh, people, planet, alongside profit. And when they 
approached me, um, our language was so similar and we had the same ideals and the same vision that immediately I decided to come on board. And so they've really recru recruited uh, different extraordinary people from around the world who uh, walk the walk and talk the talk. And um, that's what we're trying to do is live by example and implement as many values in our own businesses so that other people do the same. Where did your passion for the environment come from? Was there an experience that helped catalyze your passion for protecting the environment? Well, I, I believe and I've always said that we're all one. We're all interconnected and you know, like I said before, we have one planet, we're one humanity. And so just like I care about people, I care about the planet. You know, we have one planet and we need to start understanding that you know the resources that we ha have are precious and we need to honor that and respect that and care for that and so I do my part and uh, hoping that each individual and each organization will do their part. If you had uh, an opportunity to, to coach other billionaires on philanthropy and doing good in the world, how would, what would you say to them? What would you advise them to do? I think the biggest thing is to give the tools, you know, I always say give uh, the fish rods, not the fish. I think it's really important that when you um, have a situation, whether it's for individuals or a community or a country or a business, um, to empower people, to give them the tools to stand on their own two feet and to be empowered and grow and prosper. That's fantastic. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for being with us today. I, it's just been a joy to connect with you and uh, really appreciate your time and attention and uh, I'm grateful for all the good in the world that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Alrighty. Let's do some good. Okay.